Good morning, welcome. Welcome to Sunrise Stroll and Chat. Here at Magdala, it's a beauty this morning. There she is, there the sun is over the hills. For you, good morning, welcome this morning, welcome to life. It came before we could even see it. It was in a rush, there's not a wisp of cloud anywhere. Well, yes, way up north over the hills there looking into Lebanon. But there's hardly any cloud at all. What a beauty. Good morning, Mississippi. Chicago, Deutschland, Germany. Welcome everybody. Singapore is with us, Louisiana. Amazing. So God bless you all. What a crowd so quickly this morning, but this is a good one here, you know, as I guess we're going to have to be getting up a little bit earlier every day now. <laughs> I don't think we'll have much rain again until November. So the sun will be up early, visible early. Then, oh, there we got those birds. Yeah. Let me see if I just... Oh, that little bit over here from that little favorite plant. Mm -hmm. Let me catch my scripture. There we go. Because I'm tied onto the phone here with the cable. There we are. Now the problem is to get this level here. Hong Kong, Singapore, Australia, South Africa, Finland, Denmark, great to have you all. Good night California. It's interesting to say good night while you're watching the sunrise. Of course, Jerusalem is here. Mexico is with us, Marcella. Our famous archeologist. Welcome everybody. New Jersey. Wonderful. Houston, calling Houston, Houston calling. San Antonio, God bless you all. Wonderful. Kansas, Austria, Pennsylvania. Welcome everybody. Here you are enjoying the beauty of Magdala.
Take it in, people. We also need the moments of stillness, of calm. Just quiet silence. There's a wonderful name for the Holy Spirit that's in the Creed, the ancient Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. The giver of life. How wonderful where life comes from. Even in Genesis, and the Spirit was hovering over the waters. And here we got the waters of Galilee. The Jordan River flowing through this lake. Flowing through the Sea of Galilee. and giver of life. If we think of all the places where life happens, just think of your garden, the seed bed, the soft clay worked up for the seed, the moisture, the warmth, the protection from weeds and animals and even people, the protection, the warmth, the moisture, the softness. Or think of an egg hatching, the warmth, the protection, the nourishment, the nest, the bird watching over that nest. Where life happens, think of the womb, and the way the mother is wired to have complete protection, the sensitivity about nutrition, the stress. Sorry, I thought I'd get sorted there, but I wasn't able to swing around enough. And that bird that Soter was chasing is looking after her chicks for sure and distracting Soter so that Soter doesn't show up where the chicks are. The protection around life, where life happens. the Lord and giver of life. So let us continue with our readings. And we're with 
um, Paul still we're jumping forward to Acts chapter 20 down in the deep into the chapter from Miletus Paul had the presbyters of the church at Ephesus summoned when they came to him, he addressed them you know I how I lived among you the whole time from the day I first came to the province of Asia I served the Lord with all humility and with the tears and trials that came to me because of the plots of the Jewish people and I did not at all shrink from telling you what was for your benefit or from teaching you in public or in your homes I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus but now compelled by the Spirit I am going to Jerusalem what will happen to me there I do not know except that in one city after another the Holy Spirit has been warning me that imprisonment and hardships await me yet I consider life of no importance to me if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus to bear witness to the gospel of God's grace now I know that none of you to whom I preach the kingdom during my travels will ever see my face again and so I solemnly declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you for I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God it's interesting you're starting with the reflection about the Holy Spirit this week as we head towards Pentecost the Lord and giver of life that here we have Paul it's really I'm just reading it with that called the key of giver of life and he calls the presbyters he calls the, the leaders of the community and this process continues to happen in the church all the time the, the bishop calls the priests he goes to visit them he explains to them and they go and explain to the people and he continues to go around to visit the communities it's interesting that this structure of our community of believers is exactly the way it was at the beginning obviously with little more developed things as the body grew and organs to serve it but basically the same the same exact same structure And then what did Paul do? He said, how I lived among you the whole time I felt, I, I first came to the province of Asia. I served the Lord with all humility and with tears and trials that came to me because of the challenges and the plots. And I did not shrink from telling you what was for your benefit. Here you can see also parents. What do parents do for their children? They, lived, they live among the children the whole time they don't leave their children they're with them always with humility with tears and trials because of the challenges that face children today and even when parents or grandparents they're still praying for their children they still suffer in their hearts the trials that the children have and Paul would use that image that I nursed you like a mother I gave birth to you as a child each of these communities of faith giving life and I did not shrink from telling you what was for your benefit sometimes it's not easy for parents to just tell some facts to children about how their behavior about everything else they, they protect them they nourish them they nourish their mind they nourish their heart they encourage them they do not shrink from I did not shrink from telling you because sometimes we can shrink from speaking that word do not shrink there's great fortitude required in giving life 
and as gentle as it is done it requires extraordinary fortitude because the trials can be very challenging health resources collaboration lack of collaboration sometimes hostility and then all the personal issues of tiredness and exhaustion to give life all who give life are working with the Holy Spirit and what will happen to me now I do not know except I am realizing it's going to be a path of suffering, imprisonment, hardships that concluded in martyrdom eventually. And here the Holy Spirit is also preparing Paul for life so that in the midst of trials he will not collapse. He will not give up. And that's also part of parents' work, preparing children to face the challenges and trials of life, to strengthen them realistically and also in prudent ways how to prepare children for marriage to prepare them for life and we're living in a time when there are many challenges in all of these areas despite all of our technological prowess and and uh, dominance and we just need to uh, ponder these things and to pray for the strength we are called to give life we are working with the Holy Spirit how much life on our planet of so many kinds so many flowers so many plants so many animals so many birds and so many people the crowning of God's creation and the challenge to give life to foster life the Lord and giver of life the Holy Spirit is the friend of life the source of life and the psalm is very beautiful in this direction sing to God O kingdoms of the earth a bountiful rain you shower down O God upon your inheritance you restored the land when it languished your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided it for the needy. Blessed day by day be the Lord who bears our burdens. God who is our salvation. God is a saving God for us. The Lord, my Lord, controls the passageways of death. And wow, with the resurrection. How about that? People, let's go for a little stroll. Look at these trees, they are beautiful, you know. Just remember this image right now. And let's see them in a moment. The difference the sun makes in the trees.
people heading to work, bus drivers out serving the community. Here we are in Magdala at the Sea of Galilee. And our sunrise stroll, chat and share. And more people are able to participate in this joy because you are sharing it. And that's very beautiful. Here this Queen's, Queen Anne's lace is passing its prime but it's still there. I think there's more coming maybe. Doesn't this like there's more coming here, more life? So we might see some fresh blossoming. So let's read a word from the Gospel. So we're in John chapter 17, the first verses. We actually have this text already, but it's amazing how the Scripture is also alive. It's a source of life. The Holy Spirit reaches our hearts through the Scriptures. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. Just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me with you, with that glory that I had with you before the world began. This is a beautiful text. This chapter 17, and there's a lot more to it, a lot more text, uh, is been known for centuries as the priestly prayer of Christ at the Last Supper. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you because these words, the words you gave me I have given to them and they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them 
I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine. And I have been glorified in them, and now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world, while I am coming to you. It's a very special prayerful meditation, contemplation. It's consoling. It brings warmth to our heart, intimacy. It rekindles our life. Maybe you hear some rumbling in the background there, partying. These are Muslim young people who have finished Ramadan and they have their big three days of feasting. Today is their third day, their final day. After their all their long fast, four weeks. We pray for blessings for their hearts living on this planet with us, sharing the same sunrise and the blessings of creation. So people, it's been a great joy to be with you. Last week somebody said that we would have questions well, I said yes because you started asking questions, and I'm delighted to do that. But I haven't seen any questions. You don't have to invent them, just if there are questions. Some people said that would be a nice feature to have. This week we will talk a little bit in the sunrise stroll and chat and share about the Holy Spirit. So, as you uh, wish, there we are. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Enjoy the beautiful gifts of life. Be a giver of life. God bless you. <laughs>